Okay, let's have a look at some information that we're going to be able to get as well. So, we're actually looking at a series of MAC addresses here that are transmitting and are being received on the laptop. We're using a belt connection um, and the MAC address is transmitting and receiving data through SSID connections and you can see some of these will be locked and will have the lock sign and some will be unlocked. You'll also see that there is a variation in transmission signal. From this you can see also the strength of the signal. There is a greater signal here and there is a weaker signal coming shortly. Here's the weaker signal. The signal isn't as strong, uh, which means we're probably going to get a less effective connection through that. With most systems, however, you do need to have uh, some idea of the power scheme these days because they will have uh, controls on them with web or app connections. In some cases, they don't, and obviously those ones that don't can give you uh, access without having to put any internet in. So you can be sat there using a router and somebody's actually accessing the internet through your system. Some people might see that as an advantage, others might not. In this day of security issues, the MAC addresses can easily identify themselves um, to the SSIDs and when we look at the routers shortly, we'll also see the difference the transmissions. So this is all the information is actually good. We're now going to look at the rear of the router. This is a net gear router and we're going to look at the aerial that's at the top right pic of the picture. This gives us Wi-Fi access to the laptop. The silver cable is the cable that will go directly to the telephone line. We then have the blue cable that goes directly to the computer. The grey cable will go to a VIP telephone. The black cable is our power line. And all these connections will connect up to the system providing internet access. The screens you're going to see shortly are the driver screen that will provide us with full information to the system. Okay, so we're going to briefly show you some of the other bits to do with computing. I'm going to show you very briefly, this is a login page you can see. This takes you directly into the router status with your basic settings, your ADSL settings and your wireless settings. The router status information page gives you a lot of information. Your Wi-Fi will go through the aerial, so you need to have the, the aerial actually functional. The ADSL settings are required your port numbers to be like this for AOL and, and uh, the Netgear system. The basic settings uh, you have to have a password and you have to have a username connection. You can see this in your basic settings as well. You'll also see that the IP address is required. In, in instances you'll find the IP address will actually be able to be obtained automatically. You'll also find you've got the wireless access panel. That's very important because in this particular area not only does it transmit your SSI but also your security um, web and WAP details can be located on this page. Very, very important because also you can set up your access list as you see further down the screen. Now, setting up the access list provides you with the opportunity of increasing the number of MAC addresses that will transmit and receive from. In this particular instance, there are none, but if they were here, we would actually be able to click on the apply and that would actually log those in there uh, providing with additional connections. We'll have a look at the attached devices here as well. We do have a couple of addresses so you can see here we have the IP address and also the MAC address that is connected to this particular device, uh, this particular router. This could be a couple of laptops for example. ADSL again and also your basic settings. You've got the option there to, to ask for login. Um, so in most cases, you'll be required to log in with your internet provider. So you have another a number of other options. You have the local area network uh, set up. You can find your IP address, IP subnet mask details, and you can also see the DCHP server details as well. Now, all this information would be required to get you the internet connection 
to your IP provider and to allow the other connections to work alongside them. Don't forget your router status here. This page will give you the information. As long as that information is in there, you know you're likely to get the connection. Let's just check uh, to make sure we have got the connection. And you're going to see in a second the connection page confirming that we have connection to the server and also we have all the other information indicating full connection to the internet. Thank you very much indeed for looking at this particular page with me. Uh, we're just going to remind you that this is what your router looks like and these lights will flash when they're fully active. When it's flashing away you know you've got that internet connection.